Hello. As you can see, maybe, if I just step aside and the gimbal does what it should, no, it doesn't work. Okay, there's a lathe there. We're in the machine shop. There's only one machine in here, but we're not in the electronics workshop anymore. Um, why are we here? Well, uh, as you might see, the lathe has no headstock. And maybe you might be able to extrapolate from that that I'm currently rebuilding it. And indeed, I am. Uh, this is a cheap eBay lathe. I got it for about 400 quid. And it came with about 400 quid of lathe worth of problems. <laughs> and uh, I was just thinking, hey, maybe while I'm fixing them, I might make a video about it. And the first thing I'm going to do now uh, to show you the lathe is to flip the camera around because it feels very weird to make a video of myself, like vlog style. Yo, welcome back to the channel, guys. It, it's just wrong, so... Let's flip the camera, get my ugly head out of the way, and uh, I'll be back. All right, back in the much more comfortable, normal camera orientation where you don't have to see me. <laughs> um, we can take a look at the lathe. This is a 1930s, probably, Visa model EE lathe. <clears throat> it's very hard to find information on this. I've so far only found two images of a similar looking machine on the internet. One on a German um, well, machine tool forum, I suppose, um, where somebody else actually got a similar one. And we also didn't get any info with it uh, from when it is. So the best thing we can do is guess. And if I had to guess, again, it's 1930s to 1940s. Why? Well, if we look at the motor down here, uh, it says on the little indicator type, what you, whatever you call the little plate that says things about it, <clears throat> that it is from a company in Sachsen. And uh, Sachsen, if you don't know, used to be part of the GDR after the Second World War. So it was part of the communist country. And the lathe manufacturer, Weisser, uh, is from the Black Forest, which very noticeably was not part of the GDR. And the likelihood of a company from the Black Forest bl buying rationed motors from the GDR. <laughs> These in the GDR days were still made, but with aluminium windings. Um, the likelihood of a Black Forest company buying a motor from the GDR is extremely small, so it's definitely pre-end of Second World War. And finally, this type of lathe isn't a 1920s lathe. You can actually find one of the images I was talking about on lathes.co.uk. I'll put a link here or up here. Yeah. Uh, on a page of lathes from this manufacturer from the 1920s but or most of them actually have uh, like a transmission drive whatever way you have the wheels on one side and then a big belt going up to the ceiling with all the machines in the workshop connected together that sort of thing and uh, yeah this one doesn't this has an electric motor so it's I'm gonna say relatively modern my guess is 1930s to 1940s, but no idea if that is correct, because again, I didn't actually get any info with it. I literally got it for 400 quid from somebody who was selling it on eBay without even the gearbox mounted, with the spindle taken out of the headstock, and just sort of him saying, yeah, here, th those are the parts, they belong to that lathe, just put it together, it'll work again. <laughs> but for 400 quid for such a machine, I was like, yeah, okay, come on, we can risk it. Scrap price is like 200 quid, so... <laughs> That was actually a thought I had while I was buying it. Hold on there just a moment. Uh, I contacted the manufacturer even when I got the lathe thinking ah, they're not going to respond, they're not going to know, know anything about it. Um, and initially they didn't. They uh, said like, yeah, sorry, we don't have any info, can't help you there. But I contacted them again today, actually just calling them up and was like, hey, I have this old lathe. Can you tell me anything about it? And... Um, the helpful service rep actually said, yeah, I don't know anything about it, but we have this um, retired guy who works in our museum. I don't know how big it actually is, but that's what he said. I should just ask him. So I sent him an email and he actually got back to me like immediately, like two hours later saying, yeah, of course I can give you some info. Here are the catalog pages, like including the specs of it, which I didn't even get. And... He said that it was likely made in 1939, so 1930s to 1940s wasn't that far off. And uh, that makes this thing not quite 100 years old, more like 80 years. A bit less than 80 years. Still, 
pretty cool and uh, amazing of the manufacturer to just be like, yeah, sure, here's some info on it for a lathe, which is like, yeah, old. So uh, let's take a look at it a bit more closely, as you can already, or as you might have already been able to tell, it's very rusty. <laughs> it is about 400 quid worth of lathe, you might say. <clears throat> you can see down here all the different layers of paint that were on here. They're flaking off. There's maybe even a different layer of paint, although that might be primer. Um, some part is down to the casting, because of course this is cast iron. <clears throat> You can see cast iron down here, a gray color here, a lighter gray here, a lighter green here, and a darker green here. <laughs> so it has anywhere from two to four coats of paint on it. I would say two with two levels of primer. <clears throat> now, there's actually an interesting story about the color. I'm going off on a tangent again. But the green color that this is painted in is actually to make it look more modern. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but in fact, the green color that this was painted in is the color that almost all um, machines that you will find from Germany that were made anywhere, I would say, from the 60s to 90s, maybe? Anyway, anywhere from the 60s onwards, I'm going to just say, <clears throat> were painted in because the gray supposedly made machine shops so dull and boring that people were more likely to commit suicide. <laughs> so they thought in the 50s and 60s, hmm, we have to do something about that. Let's paint it in this nice and lively green. <laughs> That's at least the story that is always told about it. I'm not sure if it's true, but <laughs> certainly makes for a good story. So yeah, the original color was gray. When the machine was made in the, in the 1930s, almost certainly they would have painted it gray. Um, then maybe the owner killed himself, and then your owner was like, nah, fuck that, I don't want to kill myself, let's paint it green. <laughs> yeah, no, most likely somebody just bought it and was like, no, I, wanna, I want the lathe to look like it is newer, so let's paint it green. Or they just like, like the green color. That's also a possibility. <clears throat> so apart from the paintwork, you can see that uh, one of the... That was a... something just fell down in there. Anyway, <laughs> that one of the um, gear selectors for the main gearbox, this is the actual main gearbox in here, that sits between the motor, has a belt drive to the gearbox, and then another belt drive to the spindle, which would sit up here. One of the handles is uh, most certainly not the original one, but instead just a screw. <laughs> Which matches the length almost exactly. The original one was loose and... Um, not sure if you can actually see that, it might be too dark. Anyway, the actual part where that screws into had a broken thread. Somebody already put a threading insert into it, like one of those repair ones, that broke. Uh, so I just drilled it open from M10 to M12, is it? Might have actually been from M8 to M10. Anyway, I, I just drilled the hole out, may I put a new thread into it. And now it has a bolt in it, but the plan is to turn a new selector knob, selector lever for this at some point in the future as well. Otherwise, the gearbox itself works well, though. It uh, does make a bit of a racket when you're going at top speed, but to be quite honest, I wouldn't run this lathe at top speed anyway, because it has no ball bearings, but instead bushings? Is it bushings? I think so. All right, going further up. <laughs> the list of problems, you might say. This is the feed box. It has a normal, it's called a Norton gearbox in German. I don't know if you call it that in English as well. It's very hard to actually know all the proper words for the things while you, because, you know, I've studied electrical engineering, not mechanical engineering. So I'm just sitting there, yeah, the thing with the thing on it and the knob and then you turn it and it does the thing. <laughs> So, excuse the lack of proper wording on some of these things. Anyway, uh, this is the feed box. You have a high and low speed select here. Eight different gears here. And then another high and low speed select here. But this one doesn't work. So, it goes further in one direction than it does in the other. Not sure if that's on purpose. But, if we just turn the actual gear... You can see that if it's in the right position, it turns fine. Everything works, especially if you turn it fast. You can really see it. The lead screw turn. 
Let me turn it and put it in the other setting here, the bottom one. And you can see nothing happens. The gears inside are turning, but the lead screw isn't turning, so it's pretty much worthless. <laughs> Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll want to fix that at some point. Then, on top of here, used to obviously be the headstock. The headstock is now on the bench. We just do a smooth fade. I got a gimbal. It looks so great. Hopefully. <laughs> um, oh, whoa. Why did I say the gimbal looks great? That just ruined it. I think it tried to go into horizontal mode. Anyway. Horizontal? Vertical. Anyway. <laughs> This is the headstock, um, the front bearing is a bit worn, and it actually leaks oil. Could be that it's just the little sleeve here, but anyway, it leaks oil. Have to fix that. And of course it needs a new coat of paint and lots of other stuff. Now, the key issue that this thing had was that the clutch that connects the spindle, which by the way is here, this tells you that it's a small machine if you can lift up the spindle, including the chuck with one hand. <laughs> I mean, it's not that small. It's not a mini lathe, but as real lathes go, it's, it's still small. <laughs> um, so the actual gear, uh, the, the clutch that connected the spindle to the feed box with a little gear that was sitting back here. It's not this gear, but it looked kind of like this. That is broken. Um, it when you was when you were turning something and had the feet engaged, it would go and then stay still for one to five turns and then kind of keep going. Not that bad if you're just turning something on the outside or the inside or whatever. I get a poor surface finish on that point, but um, it just absolutely kills the threading capability of the lathe. Obviously, because if you're making a thread and your tool just stops for anywhere from one to five revolutions without it actually engaging after a full revolution, so it could engage after half a revolution, <laughs> it's pretty much worthless. You don't need, like, a, I don't know, an O-ring groove or whatever in a thread. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that actually really um, is a serious problem. And the first thing I was going to fix, as well as, of course, the same as with the rest of the lathe. If we just move the light a bit more nicely here. It's very... Yeah, paint is flaking off, it's rusty. It's surprisingly not as rusty as I would have expected it for, you know, having all the paint flaked off of it. But it is definitely rusty, so... <clears throat> that will need to be changed as well. And as far as problem descriptions go, I think that's it. Actually, no, there's one more thing. Let's just slowly move over. All right, back in. <clears throat> Um, looking at the actual bed of the lathe, it's pretty all right. There are a few significant dings in it. This one here probably would have been a new pants for the operator sort of moment <laughs> in your underwear moment. Um, otherwise, just small dings where the chuck or the, you know, about the position of the chuck. It does have a, a little segment here you can take out. I haven't done that yet. Probably a whole lot of rust underneath that. Otherwise, still actually in pretty good shape. And the only other issue that really exists here is that the sled, sled, top sled? No, sled, I think, uh, has a couple of shims in the back. Although these things, in all the few months that I've actually had and operated the lathe so far, haven't really been giving me trouble. So everything else works. Cross feed and yeah, clutch disengaging and the half nuts and feed clutch, everything seems to be more or less functional, except, of course, the same issue as everywhere else on the lathe, the paint. Tailstock and everything just needs a new coat of paint. Interestingly enough, you can see that the previous owner, just move this out of the way, was a bit over eager painting things, because uh, <laughs> one of these uh, shafts here actually has some paint on the end. So that will need rectified as well. And you can see that uh, this shaft has quite a lot of very disgusting grease on it, probably because uh, there's a whole lot of dirt down there in the sled gearing. So that will need to be taken apart at some point. Yeah, other than that, mechanically the lathe is fine. It is actually also leveled. And... Uh, 
really the idea of this series, after an introduction that lasted longer than most YouTube videos you can find, <laughs> um, is to restore it. Now, my goal is to actually restore it fully to the point where you're going to say, wow, this looks brand new. Whether I will achieve that goal or not, I don't know. But uh, that's sort of what I'm working towards. We will start by finishing the restoration of the headstock here. So repainting it, sandblasting it, and all that sort of stuff that you need in order for the paint to actually look good. Obviously first sandblast it and paint it. <laughs> um, I have the new paint and everything here. So that's going to be done first. Then we might have a look at the front bearing, not sure. But after that we will take apart the feed box, once I have space on the bench again. And um, hopefully repair this. Sorry by the way about the audio, I still haven't got a proper microphone yet. Repair this. And then we'll slowly take apart the rest of the lathe and um, strip the paint off of the feet, repaint those. And just one by one, hopefully restore it to its former glory. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. I will be posting this in segments simply because it'll take me a while. And if I just post like one two hour video in the end, nobody's going to watch it all the way. Probably nobody's going to watch the intro all the way anyway. <laughs> but, you know. And um, yeah, so hope to see you for the next videos. And uh, bye.